Happy Valentine's Day. Welcome back to the Mind Goals podcast, hosted by yours truly, Siobhan Higgins, professional soccer player and sports psychology consultant. I decided I wanted to surprise you guys with a little Valentine's episode um, regarding love for sport or passion for sport and give you some tips on how to not fall out of love with your sport. So, um, and I invite you, if you're not an athlete and you're listening, um, instead of thinking of your sport, think of something that you enjoy doing or, you know, like if it's, that's a hobby, if it's cooking, or maybe for some of you, it's work. So I would focus on that for you if you're a non athlete, don't have a sport right now. But if you do, then of course, think of your sport. And then we're going to relate it to like a romantic relationship, right? Because we're not always going to be completely in love with our sport and we're going to, it's going to ebb and flow in a similar way that a romantic relationship does, right? If you're married for somebody, you probably know this, I'm not married, but I feel like I are, I've heard this from so many people. Um, You're not going to be in that honeymoon stage of your relationship your whole life, right? That's just not realistic. So in the same way, you're not going to be completely 100% in love with your sport every single day. And so what do you do to kind of keep that motivation going? And what do you do to stay in love with your sport and prevent burnout? You have to come back to the basics or come back to your why. So I wanted to make this a little bit interactive. Um, If you're listening and you're in the car, you just you don't have like a pen or paper um, within reach, then just kind of take note or come back to this episode if you'd like. But I would invite you to write down a few reasons Um, that you love your sport. So for example, for me, my sport is soccer. And I started um, when I was actually I was 12 years old, I started when I was 12, which was kind of an older age to begin playing. But I started because I just loved running around and I was very competitive. So I loved something that um, gave me a competition that challenged me. Um, I loved making friends on the team. So the social aspect of sport, um, because not all sports have a team culture. It maybe it's just an individual sport. And so for me, it was team or the social aspect. Another thing I enjoyed was obviously winning. So sometimes that comes with prizes or like titles or certificates or medals or whatever that is. Um, and then, Another thing for me could be um, being able to travel. So for me, I loved a handful of things. I loved that I was constantly in competition with other people and myself. So I was being challenged. I loved the social aspect of it. I loved that I was able to travel for it. So whether that be going from like Houston to Dallas or Houston to Oklahoma or, you know, just the travel aspect and being with teammates, you know, that bonding that you get on your little car rides or that you're at the hotel for the weekends being able to travel with your family, explore new places, make new experiences, make new memories. Um, That was a good part for me. And especially playing overseas, that was very cool. I mean, my parents got to visit me in Scotland and, you know, beautiful place, beautiful country. I got to play in Portugal. I got to play in Hungary. So just travel aspect of it as well. And then on a little bit more of a deeper level, kind of out of sport, now that I'm not playing at the moment, I can see the other things that I've gained from it. So whether that be teamwork or how to collaborate with other people, or I've learned discipline because you need to wake up at 6 a.m. and be there. Otherwise, you're on the line running, right? So I learned discipline through sport. Um, But I would invite you right now to kind of take a moment and just write down your whys and write down what it is that you love about it. And then once you've kind of written those few things down, I would invite you to kind of remember, why did you start in the first place? Um, So for me, I started again, like I mentioned, because I love sports. I like running around and I wanted to come. Okay, actually, let me back up. I started because I was playing basketball. And my uh, my best friend's dad was going to be the soccer coach of the the season that was coming up. And I had never played soccer before. And I remember all my friends were doing it. So, again, socially, I wanted to join them. And my friend's dad was like, yeah, you can play soccer. Do you know how to play? And I was just like, no, I, I don't. You just run around and kick a ball. Right. And he goes, yeah, you know, you can you can start and you can be water girl. And I was like. Uh, and immediately my competitive nature kicked in. I was like, I'm not going to be water girl. I'm going to be starting whatever. I don't know any positions at the time. 
But I started basically because of a friend aspect. And then I just became to love it. And I was good at it. And then another thing for me is my coaches would send me home. You know, whenever you're younger, you're learning more skill sets. And then later you learn technique and kind of um, just ways of playing and strategy. But I looked at it as a challenge. So my coaches would send me home with homework, but really it was practice this skill, master this skill, do this this week, like learn a Cruyff, learn a turn, you know, whatever, a pullback. And for me, I was constantly challenging myself and I wasn't trying to be better than other people. I was just trying to be good at it. And so I wanted to point out that this for me is my intrinsic motivation. There's two types, intrinsic and extrinsic motivation. So for me, intrinsic is basically when you are in constant competition with yourself, you're constantly trying to improve on your own personal skills and master it because good can always be better and then better can always be even better. So no matter how fast you're running, you can always be faster. You can always set a new time. You can, you know, score more goals than the last. You can learn a new skill. You can get better at it. You get the point. But another thing that can motivate you is extrinsic motivation. So I mentioned previously some of the um, things that could be your why is you like winning, right? But why do you like winning? Do you like it because you're getting a medal? Do you like it because you're getting better? Or do you like it because of the status, like cool, your first place? And the problem with, or yeah, the problem with extrinsic motivation is that you're constantly seeking like a tangible object or something that you will truly never be fulfilled with, right? So you get it and you achieve that goal, and you maybe get first place, you get a medal, but then what? You can't get more than first place. I guess you can try to get first place again, of course, but I, it's more of like, if you are motivated intrinsically, then you ha you're, more, you're more likely to stay in love with it or continue liking it and just have a better experience playing, whatever it is for you. So I, I mean... In, if you're doing something such as cooking or learning a different hobby or like learning how to knit or something, um, even those things, like you can always get better at it, right? You're, you can perfect your craft. It can it can be tastier. It, you can add different spices here and there. But if you like, you're like, oh, I made this chicken, you know, chicken masala, then cool. It's one and done. You're going to be like, what's next? I constantly want to keep making new things. But you can always work on like perfecting your craft. So that's an intrinsic uh that's part of intrinsic motivation. So for me, um, that was a really big one because I think that kept me in it for so long. I did face a, a time in my life and it was in college where I think I was pretty burnt out after a season and I got injured my freshman year. So I had a red shirt year to take and I was considering not taking it. I was like, I can just graduate and be done. And I was kind of over it. You know, I was burnt out. I was tired, like I wasn't really having that much fun and it was the end of season and I didn't have to take that um, that next season, but I took a step back and I kind of remembered, you know, why do I like this? Why do I want to do this? Um, what could I do after this? And then that's when I got my new goal of, you know, wanting to pursue soccer professionally because I heard it from a couple of different people like, hey, you kind of seem like you have what it takes. And I thought, okay, well, I'll, I'll apply myself. Um, and that kind of made me fall back in love with it because I looked at it from a new lens. It wasn't just getting through college soccer. It was, oh, cool, there's a new goal to set. So for me, um, it's just kind of looking at it from like a different lens. Or if you've reached a certain goal, can you set a new one for yourself um, so that you're constantly, you know, attaining new goals and getting more accolades? Um, another thing I wanted to mention is think about like the process, right? Because with sports, again, it's so hard to just like be in love with it every day. You think I like, I'm not really a morning person, but I was at every single practice that we had on time. I think there was like, okay, there's one that I was not on time for, like probably, probably my entire life, but I was there 6am, 6.30, 5am, you name it. Why? Not because I wanted to, but because I was committed to my end goal. I was, I made a commitment and you kind of got to love the grind. Like it's a team sport as well for me. Everybody else was in it, right? And you are, people are counting on you. So, you know, you have to show up and that shows you discipline. And so with that, I just think that that's a beautiful thing because um, that's something that you can carry with out of sport. So be in love with the journey. And I think that's something that a lot of people forget is like, 
oh, you're in the thick of it. Like, oh, I'm not in a contract right now. Or, oh, I just got cut from a team. But it's like, remember why you're doing it. And remember that these things happen. This is part of sport. Like you, believe it or not, you signed up for this. If you're not playing, like, of course you signed up to play, but this is all part of the sport. And that's just the different perspective that you're going to have at this time. And it's going to happen. Like you're not going to be the number one starter every single time. You're not going to make the travel team every single time. And you might not score a goal or even perform your best every single time, but you have to remember your whys and remember the journey along the way so that you can kind of remember why you love it. Um, another thing I wanted to mention is think about the like the psychological part of it, right? When you play, for me, I was able to like shut off from the outside world, whatever's going on, homework, school, family issues, and just focus in and you're there like focused for yourself and with your teammates if you're doing a team sport but like think of it as you're giving yourself a gift every day like you are committing to being intentional to improving your mind and your body because it's it's a skill set to have to be able to combine the both and be um you know your coordination work that way um, but just be committed to giving yourself that amount of time um Another thing, boosting your mood, right? I feel like more times, so like more often than not, um, you get done with your sport, you get done with your workout or you get done with a game or a practice and you feel better, right? Like that's, that's fun. Like those are the days that we live for when we're, you show up to practice and you're just like not really in a good mood. You kind of don't want to be there, but you showed up because that's what you're supposed to do. And then you practice and then all of a sudden you forgot what you were even worried about. It's kind of awesome. Um, so embrace the journey and then embrace the change and the evolution. So I know that I've spoken to you guys a little bit about my experiences, but it has not all been butterflies and roses. Like it's been a true grind. I've been cut from teams. I've been injured. I've been, man, I don't know, I've dealt with crazy coaches or coaches that just coach in unethical ways. I've dealt with, hey, I think yeah, Hurricane Harvey, my house flooded during that one year in Houston. Um, embrace the change. And it's kind of beautiful the way that your teammates will come together if you're in a team sport. And if not, then friends and peers and coaches or whoever is mentoring you at the time. That is all part of your journey as well. Like those, think of the way that these people wouldn't have helped you out in the way that they have had you not been in your sport or in that position or in that situation. And I think that's kind of cool. And it's a cool way to look at it. Because now that you have those relationships over the bonding or over what they did for you or what you did for them, right? You kind of come together and it forms a sense of community. So again, come back to your why, embrace the change, embrace the journey, um, focus on your intrinsic motivation and the things that you're constantly trying to get better at so that you don't fall out of love with it because it's hard. I mean, so many times you hear stories of people who just, they're like, oh, I used to love this sport. I was having so much fun. And then they just didn't love it anymore. Or maybe you realize you didn't really love it and somebody else loved it for you, right? We see that after, we see that, sorry, happen so often is where maybe mom or dad or coach or someone identifies that their kid has talent, but that's not really what they want to do, right? And so you have to think like, are you in it for somebody else or are you in it for yourself? And what does that look like? So focus on those things. And I think that those would be a little bit, you know, some key factors that could help you stay in love with it. Um, another thing I wanted to mention is that if you find yourself kind of in a funk, you're like it's been a couple of days or maybe even a week or so, I would challenge you to sit with your emotions and how you're feeling about that sport for some time. And I would say like three weeks, right? Because this is speaking from experience. Sometimes I've had like a bad week, right? You're not consistent. You're just not playing well. You're not performing well. You're unhappy. And, but that, that one week in comparison to your whole season or your whole career or your, that year, it just, or what are we going to give up just because we're having a bad week? No, let's see how we actually feel about it. And if those feelings are consistent, which is why I have previously advised people to journal because that way you can document the times and then you can look back and think, oh, Four days ago, I had a decent practice, but a week ago, I had a bad one. And then so you can notice trends because 
If you, you know, like for example, I said, what, there's four days that you're not feeling good about it. The next week you might kill it. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh, I love soccer again, or I love my sport again because I'm doing well. Yeah. I mentioned it's going to ebb and flow like those romantic relationships and it will. And so that's just the beauty of it. that It's going to be great. It's going to be bad, but it's all about kind of moving forward and then focusing on your whys and just coming back to that every single time. Um, Another thing I wanted to touch on is cultivating a positive mindset. So I've talked about this a little bit before, not in my podcast, not in my podcast yet, but I, for the most part, are, I'm a very motivated person. And so I'm not that I'm jumping out of bed saying, Ooh, I'm ready to go run two miles. No, that's not how it was for me. For me, it was I'm excited to get better or I'm excited because we have a game on Saturday or I'm excited because I get to go run around and I don't have to do schoolwork or I get I get to do this. Right. It's an honor and it's a privilege to be able to move your body the way that you do. And if you're doing it for a living or professionally, the more the merrier. Right. So have a positive mindset because I've struggled with having a negative one before or just being in funks about it. And it's really like, how do you get out of it? Um, and an example I want to use is I was playing in Scotland. This was my first season and I was very, I just came from a university where I was the number, you know, I was, I was a starter. I was always a starter. Um, I played the majority of my games and I was, you know, I was scoring and I was getting assists, went to a team in Scotland. You don't know anybody there. you obviously have to earn your way into an, into the position, and I saw that I didn't have that much playing time. And I started a few games initially, but then it kind of trickled off and I kind of quieted out. And I really struggled because I hadn't dealt with that before. And so for me, I was like, I'm so not motivated. Like, how do people do this? Like, I feel like I'm trying so hard. And at first, I my mindset was, okay, what can I do to get better? Or what conversations can I have? Like, can I ask the coach on, you know, for starters, for, sorry, for pointers? What can I do? Is there anything that my teammates are noticing? You know, what are my teammates doing who are starting? Um, look, look for examples in people around you. And so the mindset that I had initially was, okay, let's be better. Let's, you know, work harder. Let's do this, that, and this. And then I exhausted those options and I still wasn't really getting the game time that I thought that I deserved. And I thought, man, now what, right? I'm, I'm usually an optimistic person. What do I do? And I was journaling and I would look back and I would flip back in my notes and I would just think about how excited I was to be here, right? Sometimes you have to take a moment and think, wow, I'm all the way over here in Europe. I've done it. I've already done the hard part. And now it's just maintaining consistency or now maybe... You know, looking back, it's so much easier to tell myself, but that was part of my journey. That was me learning how to adapt to that. That was me learning how to adapt to the new culture, to play with players who were better than me or and, you know, playing on national team levels. Like they were really great players. So maybe this was my time to sit and watch and observe. But at the time, my mindset was not so positive. It was like, oh, I came all the way over here. This isn't worth it. But you stick it out because you have to come back to your whys. And so that's what I did. And thankfully I journaled and thankfully I had good people in my life that were able to help motivate me. And I made it through the season. And then I even returned to the same country to play in a different team. But if I don't come back to my whys, then you're kind of sitting there and that could have been a quitting moment for me. But I would really just encourage you to focus on why you started, focus on the journey, embracing your change, and then just in the end, you can you can look back and see how much growth you've had. And it's kind of a really cool thing. Um, so for me, I'll probably just end on that note. I just wanted to give you guys a few tips and tricks that have worked for me. Um, and then again, I, I wrote a blog the other day. And I think I released it last week, but it was kind of showing my whole year up until today to why I'm even doing this podcast and talking about my experiences. And a year or two ago, I wouldn't have really thought, oh, I have something to say, but I really do. What I have is valuable experience, right? And so my whole main, like MO is to basically just share that with you guys. And so with today being Valentine's Day, definitely wanted to make sure that you guys had some type of like interactive thing to look back on. Or if you're just struggling with your sport, if you're feeling yourself coming to a little bit of burnout, come back to this or even reach out to me. Like I'm definitely here as a resource to help you 
um, pick your brain or just see where you can improve on things and see if we can keep that passion going because I know that it's hard, but you got to embrace the journey because the end goal is going to be great. So thank you guys for listening. And if you have any questions, you can visit my website at www.siobhanhiggins.com or you can find me on Instagram at mindgoalsbyshebs. Thank you and happy Valentine's Day.